Hello everyone, this is the official video editorial for problem we not adding, taken from today's code forces round. For this problem, you essentially need to know only basics of number theory. And although this problem may look a bit intimidating at first sight, um, it is not too complex and it does not use uh, advanced number theory concepts. It uses basics only. So in this problem, we are basically given an array of n distinct integers and we need to perform some number of operations on the array in order to get the largest possible array or we need to maximize the number of operations which we perform and the operation is of the form take two elements ai and aj such that the gcd of those elements are not present in the array and add the gcd to the array so we need to do this the maximum number of times possible and we need to print the number of operations which we perform and let's consider an example so let's say that so let's say that we have five elements in the array and this is the array 1 4 20 25 and 30 so note that the order of the elements does not actually matter because we only need to maximize the number of operations and the operation does not take into account the indices i and j. It just says take two random elements from the array and add the GCD of those two elements to the array. So that's why the number of elements, that's why the order of the elements does not matter. And we can sort the array as we want. Now, one key observation along the way which we will make is that the we need to basically check whether each element, each number um, going from 1 to the maximum element, 10 power of 6, can be added to the array or not. So this is one observation which I'll reiterate later when we go to the solution. But let's basically check whether each number from 1 to 10 power of 6 um, can be added or not to the array and basically let's start from 1 so 1 is already in the array so we can't add it to the array again then let's consider the number 2 uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because we know that the, uh, in the array contains distinct integers and each time we need to add a distinct number to the array that's why we just need to count how many elements from 1 to 10 power of 6 can be added to the array um, because there are 10 power of 6 elements in the array so let's do that or uh, let's um, check for 1, 1 is already there in the array, 2, 2 is not there in the array, that's why it can be added to the array um, by taking the GCD of like 4 and 30, 4 and 30 has a GCD of 2, so we can add it to the array, 3 cannot be added to the array because we don't have two numbers in the array which are GCD of 3, um, 4 cannot be added to the array because 4 is already in the array, 5 can be added because the GCD of 20 and 25 is 5 um, and you can uh, also see that the GCD of 25 and 30 is also 5 so uh, either of those two ways 5 can be added to the array then I think um, from the uh, explanation uh, 10 is also added to the array because GCD of 20 and 30 is 10 so 10 is also added to the array um, like we'll obviously iterate over all numbers like 6, 7, 8, 9 you will realize that um, 6, 7, 8, 9 cannot be added to the array because there are no two distinct elements in the array such that the GCD of those two elements is equal to that particular number. So from the example itself, uh, we come up with the first observation in this problem, which is for each number i going from 1 to 10 power of 6, check if i can be added to the array. If i can be added to the array, and i is not already there in the array then we will increase the answer by 1 and the final answer will essentially be the number of such i which can be added to the array and are not already there in the array so all we need to do is given an i given a particular i in 1 to 10 power of 6 check if um, there exist two integers in the array which have a gcd of i that that's what we are essentially checking because like in in that case only 
the element can be added to the array so or uh, let's do that let's consider uh, when the gcd will be i so the key idea is that the gcd will be i if you consider two numbers um, which are multiples of i and those are i into a and i into b let's see that these are the uh, let's see that actually um the, there are number of candidates so let's say um it's a1 a2 a3 uh, or let's consider an, a new array b which contains all the multiples of i from the original array a so let's say that there are some uh, x number of these elements or uh, let's say that this is a new array b which is defined by for each uh, element in array a uh, check if it's a multiple of i if it's a multiple of i add it to the array b so let's say we create this array and we want to determine we want to check if there are two elements if there are two indices in b uh, such that uh, basically the gcd of i the gcd of i into b uh, let's say that there are two uh, random elements um, let's say k is the number of elements and there are two random elements x and y so we want to check whether x and y exist such that the, uh, the gcd of i into bx and i into by is equal to i so therefore we need to ensure that the gcd of bx comma by is equal to 1 because uh, by gcd properties gcd of i into bx comma i into by is actually equal to i into gcd of bx comma by and that is actually you can cancel out the i and you get one so in that way we just need to check whether two elements exist in the new array b such that the gcd of the two elements is equal to one now if you naively do this you will obviously need to iterate over all the elements in the array which takes 10 power of 6 times uh, and you need to do this for all i going from 1 to 10 power of 6 so that takes 10 power of 12 time which will obviously not work in two seconds so you need to find a more efficient way of checking whether two elements exist such that the gcd of those two elements um, is equal to i or basically if you divide all the elements by i the gcd of two numbers is equal to one so there's actually one catch in what i mentioned so far the catch is that in order to check whether i can be added to the array or not if we consider all multiples of i, we don't need to check whether any two elements exist which have a GCD equal to i. Rather, we need to check whether the GCD of some subset of these elements is equal to i. Because we can essentially like uh, do this any number of times. We can, we can keep choosing elements any number of times which we want. And we just need to check whether the GCD or like of any subset of these uh, divisible elements is equal to i. Because if you look at the problem statement again, you will see that we can perform the operation an infinite number of times. And since we can perform the operation an infinite number of times, we can essentially choose some subset of these uh, of, of this set and repeatedly like choose two elements so we'll let's say we want to choose b1 b2 and b3 so first we will take b1 and b2 the gcd of them then we'll take the gcd of b2 and b3 like i mean um, uh, i into b1 i into b2 then i into b2 and then i into b3 in this way we will repeatedly uh, do the gcd and in that way we can ensure that we take the gcd for i into b1 i into b2 and i into b3 and that's why uh, we are essentially taking a gcd of a subset so so this condition which i wrote here is is not exactly correct we don't want two elements to have a gcd one we need to ensure that the gcd of some subset in b so this is a gcd of subset in a and this is a gcd of subset in b is equal to one and this is where like this line over here is the crux of the whole problem i mean of the of this part of the solution like this is the ending and the ending basically tells us that 
we need to check whether some subset of this B exists such that the GCD is 1. And in order to do that, the key idea is that the GCD can never go below 1. That's the key idea. So since the GCD can never go below 1, we will just find the GCD of all the elements in B. So if you find the GCD in all the elements in, in, in this B array, then what happens? Then the key idea is that um, then we basically know that uh, we can repeatedly uh, do this process of, of uh, choosing two elements, i into b1, i into b2, taking the GCD and, uh, uh, and basically uh, repeatedly adding that uh, value to the array and repeatedly taking the GCD of that with the next value. And in this manner, we can basically uh, keep on adding elements. And in the end, if we know that the elements which we have added uh, form form a have have a total GCD of i, we know that uh, we have uh, added that uh, we we have uh, accomplished we have added the element i to the array. And since uh, we desire the GCD to be one, or uh, each time the GCD will keep on decreasing, but it will never go below one. And that's why we can just um, take the GCD of the whole, whole array and if that GCD of the whole array is equal to 1, uh, we will uh, print yes, I mean th then we will increase the answer by 1 and uh, this actually corresponds to this condition. If the GCD of the whole array A, uh, if the GCD of multiples of A, if the GCD of multiples of I in the array A is equal to i, then we will print yes. I mean, th then we'll increase the answer by one. Otherwise, the answer will remain the same. And now I'll show the uh, actual implementation, how we can actually implement um, this idea. So the key idea for, for the implementation, I'll be showing it to you with the help of the code, is to use, uh, to use uh, a kind of sieve-like method. So we need to iterate over all multiples of i. So in order to do that, we will use a Boolean vector present uh, of 10 power of 6 plus 1. Present of i represents uh, whether or not i is in the array. i is in the array a. That's what present of i represents. It just checks whether i is in the array or not. So for each x going from 1 to n, we will set present of x to be true because x is in the array and for all other elements we will set it to be false. Then we will iterate over i going from 1 to 10 power of 6. We will set the GCD to be 0 initially because like GCD of any number and a 0 is equal to that number. So that's why we set the GCD to be num initially. And the key idea which I just mentioned is to take the GCD of all multiples in the array. So for all multiples i, starting from i into 1 and uh, going up till like the, so j represents a multiple. So let's just call it another variable. So let's say for all uh, int multiple equal to i into 1 uh, and multiple uh, less than or equal to 10, 10 power of 6, the multiple will increase by i. Uh, if present of this multiple, if the if this multiple of i uh, exists in the array a, if it's present in the array a, this means that we take uh, the GCD of this element of this multiple uh, into the cumulative GCD basically, and uh, GCD will be equal to g will be equal to the GCD of g and this multiple, and we know that in the end, in the end, if the GCD is equal to i, then we know that we have found a way of basically including i in the array. So this means that we can add i to the array and we increase the answer by 1. And i is basically a new addition. However, if g is not equal to i, then we know that g will be strictly greater than i. The reason being, the GCD can never be below i 
and we want to make sure that it is equal to i. So that's why we will keep taking the GCD of all the multiples. And like that's the whole idea. We know that the GCD should be equal to i and hence we consider only multiples of i. And since we want the GCD to be equal to i, um, we basically can take the whole array and uh, we can just consider the GCD of the whole array. And if that turns out to be equal to i, then we know that the GCD of the subset is 1 and basically we can choose the whole subset. And we have found a construction where we add i to the array. And uh, I tried to explain this part uh, to the best. So uh, if you still have any doubts, uh, please write them in the comments down below and I will um, explain uh, more if I can or uh, how exactly, why exactly just taking the GCD of all the multiples in the array works and why just considering that GCD value to be equal to i works. So that's the full idea. Uh, we just store the count of such number of new additions and um, it, it, then, then we'll just print the answer and you can verify that um, the GCD will either be greater than i or it will be equal to 0 in the case when g is not equal to i or uh, it can be 0 in case there is no multiple of i in the array. So in that case we can't add i because the GCD can't be i. However, it can be equal to i if there is some subset and we take the subset to be all the multiples which are in the array. So I'll just submit this. So the correct assert statement would be um, we assert that the ith element, the, uh, the value i is either present in the array or the GCD is greater than i or it's equal to 0 because we know that if it's equal to 0, there's no multiple of i which is in the array. If it's already present in the array, we cannot add it to the array. And if the GCD is greater than i, we cannot add it to the array because then we know that no subset exists which has a GCD equal to i. And since the GCD is always decreasing, we know that the GCD will always like end at i. And in that case, if it ends at i, then we'll print, then we'll increase the answer by one. And you can verify that this gets accepted. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you had any doubts, especially in the uh, main part of the logic, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.